41 of 2019 was How the World Thinks by uh, Julian Thinkini. Um, when I first started reading this book, I thought that it was really, really good. Um, it kind of questions the way that you think and your whole kind of belief system. Um, and obviously I grew up in the Western world and the way that I think is very, um, or the way that the education system is structured is very Western. And this book allows you to understand Eastern thought in comparison to Western thought and how things are different um, and why that changes our approach to belief systems so it's very very interesting for that reason um, it talks a lot about um, kind of I've got my little checklist here which is why I keep looking down <laughs> um, what have I put here um, so there's a little bit of colonial racism in the sense of people in the west are very dominant in terms of scientific inquiry and are very quick to chuck out anything that doesn't follow scientific dogma um, and so we'll almost view people in the east as being below them because they believe in other things like theology and divinity and probably more theology than divinity but things like that um, and because say for example they're in a situation where they're giving knowledge the western view is to kind of criticize and question and almost in a kind of greek way to like you know like aristotle and and those kind of thinkers used to do to reason and, and get to the bottom of it like that whereas the opposite of that is in eastern thought they're more likely to respect what the speaker is saying and instead of kind of trying to criticize it and and think of something different they kind of respect the knowledge and just kind of come at it in a, in a creatively different way but it's still this in the same essence so a key difference is if you go to a conference if it's a western conference there'll be a lot of questions from the audi audience if it's an eastern conference there'll not be very many questions people will be quiet you know they'll just kind of listen um so the colonial racism there is that the west will view the east as being not very intelligent not very academic because they're not engaging in that kind of learning and thought in the same way um, and so because of that they might think that they are better uh, which i thought was very very interesting because you would automatically assume that if you you criticize and you look into things in a scientific way that you would be more knowledgeable the argument is is that you can have lots of knowledge which now the internet provides us with you know there was a time when we weren't as intelligent as what we are because we didn't have access to information whereas we have access to information now we can educate ourselves now but the problem is you can have all this knowledge but you don't have experience and the east is very focused on experience the west is very focused on knowledge and really you kind of need both so you know with the east is about knowledge as well but it's all more focused on, on experience they might have it a bit more right than what the west do really if you think about it like that um it's very very interesting they've done studies where people in western cultures when they look at an image they see the forefront of the image the thing that's kind of uh, center and front whereas eastern cultures will see the background they see the spaces between things they don't see you know the thing the thing at the forefront uh, which is very interesting in terms of your belief system so collectivist cultures are very much about how the part of a whole whereas scientific inquiry expects you to be quite reductionist and therefore you're very individualistic you're very kind of focused on yourself um so that un you know underpins the belief systems and you can kind of understand from that viewpoint why we have different opinions and beliefs about things because we think differently very very differently about things um there's kind of an opinion that so this colonial racism thing of western society being more scientific they think they're more advanced technologically and that that's better but the argument is that with technological advancement you will kind of almost um create destruction you'll kind of like burn yourself out or whatever you'll you know for example we've become very technologically advanced we've got kind of uh, power systems now but then that's creating global warming because of the CFCs in the, in the atmosphere um, 
creating holes in the ozone layer, radiation coming through, all that kind of stuff. So we're creating our own detriment by our technological advances. These could argue, do argue, that, or it could be argued from people in the West as well, that that's not necessarily great because we're not sustainable. A lot of places in the East were more technologically advanced than the West, but then stopped being because of theology and that's made them more sustainable they will probably live a lot longer um but then maybe not because we're actually destroying the whole world um the west are so you know maybe not now but in you know years gone by they were more sustainable so these technological advances whilst we think they're great in the west they might actually not be in in, in the entirety and so maybe it's better to not be as advanced because then it's more sustainable um it also says about Eastern thought how belief in karma has a kind of fatalism to it because people are like, oh, that's not my karma to do that or whatever, so it almost stops progress and things. So each thought, West and Eastern, have got the positives, have got the negatives, um, and the West are kind of seen as being very aggressive and, you know, we leading back to that, that idea there about. Um, advancement means destruction um, but then the opposite of that is that believing that Eastern isn't as progressive um, so it's really really interesting it talks about many different things uh, what I would say is that the beginning part of it is a lot more interesting than the latter I think the first third is amazing I'd have given it four stars if uh, it had been that good all the way through but I think towards the end it becomes a little bit superfluous it becomes a little bit um, talking about things which aren't as interesting um but very good in terms of changing how you think about things and it kind of under helps you understand like the conflicts between different areas of the world and how they view things and how they view society um so it's definitely you know worth a read and definitely say read it it's quite big though it's quite dense as well like you you'd have to be used to reading philosophy i think philosophy is one of those subjects where the more you read the better you get at it but um it is quite dense but the chapters uh, some of them are, are quite short so it's not as bad as like reading Aristotle or Plato or whatever um but yeah it's it's worth a read I think